Okay, good morning everyone. So I'm actually here presenting on behalf of the whole DataArc team, um, which includes Geasley, who you've just met, and Colleen Strawhacker, and Phil Buckland, and Adam Brin, and Chris Angel, who's in the back. So we are a fairly large crew, and that's just part of our team. Um, and today we're going to be talking specifically about the Data Arc project and what it is we're trying to do to really drive interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary research. So what is Data Arc? Data Arc is a research community studying long-term human ecodynamics, human environment interactions in the North Atlantic. And within the Data Arc project, what we're really trying to do is to build digital tools to encourage interdisciplinary approaches at the data discovery phase of research. And the at the data discovery phase is important here because a lot of us do interdisciplinary research, but one of the things we found within this research community was that people tend to do their interdisciplinary research at the end, at the synthesis phase. So, you know, when we've already come to our conclusions, then we get together with our colleagues and we try and see how everything fits together. And within this community, what we realized is it would be really useful if we started to build interdisciplinary research in earlier in the research process. So really at that phase when you are formulating your questions and when you are just starting to look for your data. So how do we actually do this? How do you actually get people to develop new research habits where they're going to go and look outside their normal mindset, their normal kind of disciplinary vocabulary and silos to start grabbing data from other people's disciplines early on? Um, and how do we make sure that you are kind of not terribly misunderstanding that data that you're grabbing at that early phase? Um, and so this is something we've talked about a lot within the community. Um, we are all experts in our own small corner of archaeology, but you might find that you don't have the appropriate expertise to really deeply engage with someone else's specialist data. So I grew up in classical archaeology. I know a lot about landscape archaeology. I'm not a zoo archaeologist, so this is one of our typical examples. So how do I get enough context to understand that bit of data that is probably related to my data but not exactly within my area of expertise. So contextually connecting data from archaeology, from literature, from historical documents, from paleoecology, from paleoclimates, really giving people the context that they might need to start to usefully engage with data from other bits of the discipline. So these are kind of the big goals of the project. And the data art community, as you see from our many logos up here, is a really, really diverse community. So this is a real challenge within our community, getting the people who are experts in Icelandic sagas to choose to engage with and intelligently engage with data about the paleoclimate. This is the kind of thing that we are trying to do. So let me just give you a few examples of the people we're trying to connect. So we work with a great researcher, Vicki Zabo, who is based at WCU, and she has a project where she's looking at textual, genetic, and archeological evidence for pre-modern mam mammals in the North Atlantic. And so she's already got a bunch of interdisciplinary work within her own project, but she wants to know how her research might be informed by paleoclimate data, by textual mentions of uh, marine mammals in the sagas or in other historical records about resources. So we have Vicki. We have Phil, who is here today and who we'll be hearing more from later about his research. Um, and Phil Buckland works with paleoecological data, primarily with um, insects, but also pollen, uh, macro charcoals. So he runs the SEED database, the Strategic Environment Archaeological Database. So how do you connect him with people who are working with <coughs> conventional archaeological data? Um, Geesley Paulson, also here today, uh, is doing a doctoral project looking primarily at uh, historical records about farms and farm resources in Iceland. So this will also connect in with environmental data, with other textual data, with other historical data. So how do we connect him in and how do we connect him with someone like Emily Lethbridge who is running the excellent Saga Maps project where she's actually gone around Iceland and mapped places, a kind of geolocated places that have been mentioned in the sagas um, and is trying to connect saga text to the landscape. How do we connect her with Phil who has all of the paleoecological data? How do we get them to start looking at one another's stuff early in the research process? 
Um, so we are building the Data Arc data discovery tool to try and help them to do this, to bring these diverse researchers and data sets together. So how do we create intentionally transdisciplinary search? Intentionally being really important here because we all say that we do interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary research. We all have good intentions of doing it. We need a push. It is actually hard to get yourself to consistently exit your little domain silo and look at other people's related data. Um, so this is what we are trying to do, encouraging researchers to look at data from outside their own spe specialism early in the process. So what would transdisciplinary search results actually look like? Are they organized by concept? Are they arranged by domain somehow within things related to archaeology? Do we explain the connections? Do we provide summaries of data? When you actually start to build the tool, these are some of the things that we've started to ask. And so one of the important things that we've done is we've developed a shared knowledge model within the data arc community. So this was the result of many, many long conversations about what we meant when we said things like fish. Um, and so what we've done is we've developed this shared um, knowledge model, and this is our concepts level. And what I'm going to walk you through quickly now is that we then connect those concepts through something we call combinators, which I will explain, um, to our data. So the idea is basically to kind of build an intellectual scaffolding between a network of high-level concepts that the community has uh, defined through these combinators, which are kind of fairly well-accepted things within individual disciplines, and then down to individual data elements to kind of provide the context for data that you need to really engage with someone's data from outside your discipline. So we've developed our shared concept model, which has been through a number of iterations, as you can see here. Um, and we have, for kind of future-proofing purposes, actually mapped our concept map to the CDOC CRM. And this is so that we will hopefully be able to kind of connect our conceptual model to conceptual models or ontologies developed by other groups in the future. Um, so we've been through a big exercise of doing this. Um, and this is kind of created some challenges for our community as well, because um, as Eric Konza says, the CDOC CRM is kind of a useful tool but has a number of problems. Um, you really have to understand the data, you have to understand what people want to do with the data, and the bit that I picked up on is that there's value in following standards, but not for the sake of the standard. Um, so you want maybe a loose or a partial use, and I would say we are probably the biggest breakers or creative users of the CDOC CRM and that we've had to kind of bend it in various ways to make it work for our data. Um, but we are kind of hoping our creative use of the CDOC CRM will allow us to connect our data to other people's data if they are also hopefully creatively using the CDOC to um, think through how their data is structured and how different parts of it relate. So. How do we connect our concepts to our data? We've got our concepts, they relate to one another. They have hooks to the outside world through the CDOC CRM. Um, we are going to show you a quick example of one way we connect our concepts to our data, so using the Icelandic saga maps. So this is uh, Emily's project. So what we've been doing is we've been going through the text of these sagas and we've been tagging um, at the paragraph level actually um, different concepts into the text. And this is actually kind of a tricky exercise. You're going to see we're making decisions all the way through this process. Because at what level of granularity should you tag up a text to relate it to concepts? If we tag at the word level, that might not be very useful because individual words might be really misunderstood out of the context of their text. So if you tag at a chapter level, maybe that's not granular enough for you to be able to understand. Particularly, you'll note all these texts are in Icelandic. Um, to understand uh, where that concept fits within the text. So we've kind of chosen the paragraph level as a reasonably happy medium. Um, and so each paragraph is then connected to different concepts that are mentioned in it. And this is something that's being done by Emily and Trousty and some other people involved in the project who are experts in 
Icelandic saga. So they're kind of baking their expertise into our data product in that they are the ones who are choosing how these connections are made. So they are providing to you, someone who is not an expert in the sagas, the connections that they see between shared concepts, kind of high level themes, and then kind of their granular data. So we've been through a similar exercise uh, with Phil Buckland's data, so from Seed, um, where within Seed they've got loads and loads of raw data, individual insect counts, pollen data. And so what we've been doing is we've been connecting at the environmental indicator level. Um, so environmental indicators are kind of descriptions of habitats or landscape elements. So they kind of aggregate together a lot of that raw data about insects um, in this case. And they are what we consider kind of the right level for a non-expert user to be engaging with this data. Um, so again, this is kind of baking expertise in. Rather than asking a non-expert user to grapple with raw counts, which Phil rightly worries might easily be misinterpreted, you are going to originally, you'll always be able to get back to those counts by going into seed, but you will originally engage with this at the environmental indicator level. So this is kind of raw data that has been cooked for you a little bit. And these environmental indicators have then been tagged to the concepts in the shared concept map. Um, so this is kind of how we're connecting out into his data. So how are we doing these connections? We are using our combinators, as I've mentioned. So these are kind of two examples of combinators. So we take our raw data, like pollen counts from seed, and they become the ratio, uh, they become through the combinators, say a ratio of trees to grass in terms of the pollen, which might indicate changing woodlands, or a ratio of uh, several different uh, eco codes, environmental indicators, um, which will also maybe represent some sort of landscape change. So you have your combinator that is essentially a query on Phil's data, on the seed data, um, at a certain level of granularity. So not on the raw data, but on the uh, kind of slightly cooked environmental indicator data. Um, so in parallel, um, in TDAR, uh, the digital archaeological record, where we have some of our faunal data held, something like the ratio of sheep to cows indicating changing wealth and status of sites perhaps. So what we are doing is taking our raw data, building these combinators, so building these meaningful combinations of data within individual data sets, and then tagging those to the shared concepts. So this is kind of a three-tier structure. Um, and this hopefully allows us to kind of take the expertise of our individual experts and share it out through our shared conceptual model. So this is just kind of another look at the um, same process. So really connecting from your data set and the individual fields through the combinators to shared concepts. Um, so this process of experts saying to you, this set of stuff is meaningful when combined. So that's a big part of our process. Um, and we've also thought a lot about how to present these search results um, to make them kind of readable and usable to you. So we have a hierarchy of matched, related, and conceptual results. Um, so what we are doing basically is we are giving to you things directly related to your search in the middle. Things one degree away um, are the related results, and conceptual results are two degrees away on the concept map. And we are binning these results um, by kind of general theme, so grouping by archaeological, environmental, and textual. And the idea here is to get you to say, hey, okay, I'm coming in as an archaeologist and I'm going to search on a concept that is familiar to me um, and I'm going to get back not just the archaeological results, but I'm shown at the same time sitting right next to it relevant textual and environmental data. And we're hoping to kind of suggest to you, you might also want to look at this data. Um, and then things that come in through the uh, related and contextual results kind of are maybe related to concepts that are related to your concept. 
Um, so we are then going to allow you to kind of view those results and drill down and have a look at the individual bits of data and then link back to original data sources. Um, so there are a lot of ongoing challenges in doing this as we are trying to build this tool. So I'm just going to wrap up on those challenges, uh, which hopefully are apparent to you. We have really diverse data sets and users. We have experts um, who worry about other people having sufficient expertise to engage with their data. Um, and we have the big challenge of kind of knowledge modeling within our community. Um, because all of our experts, all of our domains have bits of domain specific assumptions um, that we kind of code fairly deeply into our data and opening this up to other people using appropriate vocabulary is really, really challenging. We have all of these issues of multiple roles and multiple mappings. Um, we can basically continue to conceptually map forever and ever and ever down into the universe. Um, and finally, we have to think about how we can continue to evolve um, and kind of develop this process because transdisciplinary research is really, really complex and interconnected. Um, and we need to think about how we can continue to let these different disciplines work with one another and let researchers kind of continue to move forward um, and hopefully allow the tool we're building to move forward with them. So we have a beta tool online, check it out, um, and we'd love to hear feedback from all of you. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take some questions.